Welcome, my name is Natasha Sherman and I am your host. So in today's world, it's easy to think that we're going down the tubes rather quickly. And then every so often, something wonderful shows up that gives us hope. So my guests today are a brother and sister. Actually, they are twins, Seema and Suraj Kuramili. And at the age of about 13 or 14, they'll clarify it for us, they started a nonprofit organization called Literacy Movement for More. So welcome, Seema and Suraj. Hi. Hi. Hi, so you are 17 years old now, mm -hmm. yeah. and you started this organization, Seema, I'll have you answer this part. At what age and what prompted you, like? So, uh, well, first, thank you for having us. You're quite welcome. Um, you are right, we did start this uh, at a very young age, 13 of course, we had just graduated from eighth grade, so very big time for us. But um, the year before, when we were 12 years old, um, my brother and I actually visited our ancestral home for the first time in India, and uh, it was incredible. I mean, of course, visiting somewhere where our roots are kind of searching for identities. Um, it, was, it was a great experience, honestly, and uh, it really, it touched both of us a lot. And what stood out the most to us was, um, despite, you know, the greatness of this village, I mean, the people were warm, the, like everybody was welcoming. Um, these people did not have access to educational materials in general. Um, the library was incredibly decrepit. Um, my dad would tell us stories about how he would have to, you know, travel miles to go to another book sale in case he wanted to buy textbooks if he was, you know, an avid reader. So if he just wanted to buy like a paperback book, like he would have to travel, like take the bus, take the, like ride his bike um, just to get a book. And, um, you know, hearing these stories, seeing the people, seeing the lack of access, um, Surj and I, you know, it felt like a crime if we mm. didn't if we didn't try to do something. Really did. Um, our parents always raised us with the values that you know giving back to the community is uh, the best thing that you can do. You know, to help yourself and to ultimately make an impact on the world. So we were always raised with these values, starting from our grandparents to our parents to us. So we were encouraged to start it. Um, Serj and I came up with the idea, and we went back the next year and we started something that you know, has grown into uh, an organization that we believe makes an impact on a lot of people, so. Wow, so Suraj, <laughs> tell me, um, so here you are, 13, and you see this, and you know, we take it for granted. We mm -hmm. take books for granted, we take school yeah. for granted, yeah. until sometimes, you know, you see a documentary where kids are riding the tops of trains from Ecuador for hundreds and thousands of miles just to get <laughs> yeah. to maybe a school, and, uh, so clearly the juxtaposition of what we have mm -hmm. and what you saw, but also the values that you were taught motivated you to do something. So as you're talking about it with your sister, what is it that kind of, how did the conversation go? Like, oh, let's do this or? <laughs> I mean, yeah, honestly, it was, <laughs> it was more of just that we just saw it's just a jarring difference. And they were just like, we have the resources back at home we can do something for these kids and we want to do something for these kids because we know while it might not it some a little hassle for us is a world of a difference for them that's something crazy so we just decided hey let's just contact the Plainsboro library let's contact some let's get some do donations for us and then let's bring these books to the uh kids in our ancestral home our village and that's pretty much how it started, yeah. Wow. Yeah. So the first year you collected how many books? Oh, man. So um, we actually had, we had uh, four suitcases of 50 pounds. So I think that's 200. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's 200. Okay. 200 sure pounds of books. Yeah, 200 pounds of books. <laughs> yeah. So, so you, back, so sure you traveled <laughs> to India uh -huh. with these four suitcases yeah. full of books. Yeah. 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 <laughs> wow. It was quite a... <laughs> and, and customs, did they question you or? No, they were, okay, the issue wasn't like customs. Like I said, um, we have our own like family trips. So right. we decided that, hey, we're going to stop by like, the village is like two hours away from like our, where our grandparents used to stay, right? 
like okay we can take these books and like obviously customs didn't care too much about that but the, it, there was a lot of logistics you know like carrying like 200 pounds of books yes. yeah. here and there like it was heavy it was yeah. a lot of grunt work yes. yeah. 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 yeah yeah and and the Plainsboro library donated mm -hmm. yeah. so uh we owe the biggest thanks you know to the Plainsboro library they, they made this possible yeah to, they really allowed us to lift off um, when we first started, we, you know, just on a limb, we kind of just reached out and said, hey, does the library have any books they'd like to donate, um, anything that they have extra, and uh, we got in contact with some people over there. We found some great mentors, and they helped us build the library from the ground up, so they donated books from their used book sale. And uh, we were basically. Did you care what kind of books? Did you, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Did so, you make specific requests? Or? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the children in the, that we targeted, they're um, so like I said, it's in India, right? So even uh, well, the age range is first of all, it's from like elementary to middle school, mm -hmm. right? And even in the high schoolers, they still some of them still read at a middle school level, for example. So we tried focusing on uh, children's books, so mostly um, uh, picture books mm -hmm. and young adult novels. And then, but we also made sure to get textbooks as well for the kids who are going from um, high school to college there. So we got like some important, like GMAT, which is an important um, exam that they have to take in mm -hmm. India, mm -hmm. and a couple like a TOEFL, which is an English proficiency test as well. So we got right. make sure to get textbooks for those as well. So we have so well, what we focus mostly on elementary books. We try to get somewhere of a range. Right. Mm -hmm. So uh, so n now you show up and. You said you had mentors, mentors mm -hmm. in India as well, or yeah. mentors here. Yeah, um, you know, Serge and I were so young when we started this, so uh, <laughs> we, didn't really we, know. we reached out personally, of course, and uh, you know, this was very spontaneous. Us as kids, we didn't have a lot of idea of what to do, so we we were like, we would write down ideas. Hey, maybe the library might have this. Hey, maybe. You know, if we go to the community fair, we can get some money. <laughs> so we would just come up with these ideas. And um, we did find great people who kind of guided us um, through the donations process at the library. And in India, we reached out to orphanages, children's homes, you know, places that we found uh, had the greatest need for the educational resources. Uh, we reached out to, you know, village leaders, village elders, um, and they provided a lot of, uh, a lot of the vision that we needed to have, you know, as we were so young. But ultimately, uh, that kind of, you know, that was, we had a lot of that guidance for the first year, but after that, it was yeah. more of our personal yeah. growth, of course. <laughs> so um, kind of going into high school, balancing school versus, you know, our nonprofit work. Um, I wouldn't change a single thing. You know, this is the most rewarding thing I've done. Oh, uh, by far, Up till yeah. date. Yeah, I wouldn't change anything. It's been a great experience. Um, we've met amazing people along the way. And I think the biggest takeaway that we have from most of our organizational work is, you know, these people who we're reaching out to, they're not pitiful people. They're not, you know, people who you see are really struggling emotionally every day. It's more people, they have a hunger, a passion to just live, to educate themselves, to read. Um, they're happy, warm people. They want to do something. And uh, we found out that, you know, the best part of what we do is that we get to interact with these people. Um, you know, it's life-changing stuff, honestly. You meet people from different walks of life. They give you different perspectives, different ideas. Um, so, you know, the least we can do is give these, you know, incredible people access to just books that they can use to feed their minds. Um, and us growing up in such a, you know, great district, such a great town, um, we felt that it was our responsibility to kind of help build up these people and, you know, foster our own growth as well. So, you know what I really uh, appreciate about what you just said? You know, you, you create the picture of these are not people who are pathetic. Yeah. Uh, no, and you not. don't want to look at them and go, oh, you know, poor you. Yeah. These are people like everybody else, yeah. they just don't have resources. Yeah, they have exactly. limited resources, yeah. but they have the same hunger that everybody else yeah. does. Yeah. They want to live a better life. They yeah. want to provide for their families. And what's very clear is the, the warmth and the appreciation mm -hmm. and the fact that they took your gifts and your donations yeah. and ran with it and supported you in doing it. 
so they were partners with you yeah. as well. Yeah. So I, it seems to me I read that you had to go in and even build shelves or somebody had to go in and build yeah. shelves. Mm -hmm. You know, it's so, uh, it's almost unfathomable for most, most of us living yeah. here. I mean, a library is, you know, a given. Mm -hmm. And their a book is precious. It's access to something that yeah. they're very aware of and yeah. we take for granted. So then what were the, just the physical logistics that you had to deal with and <laughs> overcome and create? Yeah. Yeah, so I mean, like I said, in our original story in um, a 2013 summer, like I said, like I said, traveling like two hours with, from, from the airport to our grandparents' house and then from grandparents' house to the village, ancestral village, it's quite, it's just quite a, hassle because drive. because it's not <laughs> yes. only that they don't the roads are like they don't have like proper roads i've There's been no to highways. india yes yeah. yes There's absolutely no it's like old like dirt roads you have to like cut through things <laughs> and then like when you get lost you have to just uh go uh, go ask everybody okay where is the, are we going the right direction <laughs> and, and, right uh, no gps it's signal. so it's not like you yeah. just get in the car and oh you know easy breezy you know no. <laughs> no. Yeah. driving on a major highway yeah like i said yeah. we had 200 pounds of books so like you have to make <laughs> yeah. slow turns you gotta make sure the car doesn't topple uh -huh. over and stuff yeah so it was a lot of just logistics and once we got there we had to like set up the room itself so we had to like move the shelves around we had eventually when we went the next year we actually built in more shelves because we were expanding the library as well but like the first year itself, like I said, we had to move the shelves, like organize the books by themselves. We had to have, we actually had one shelf um, that was easy to reach by older children. That was actually a shelf just for dictionaries, English to um, Telugu is the dialect they speak mm -hmm. there. So English to Telugu and Telugu to English, uh, just a row of just uh, dictionaries. So if the kids want to learn like some of the words that they might not understand. And then we like I said, we label it by picture books and then, you know, the, the pretty picture books. And then like there's like mm -hmm. the... Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. oh, I wouldn't say the other books I guess right, say right. yeah 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 and then novels and the textbooks we actually rationed out like a different section as well so, so was... tell me the reaction of the students and then mm -hmm. I want to know the reaction when you went back a year later mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. you know what you yeah. saw was the difference yeah so when you first brought them and you're setting up this library and mm -hmm. oh, they, were, they were they were like they were just excited like they weren't exactly sure sure what was going on yeah, so like. Yeah. As we were like setting up the library, you could like always see like a kid's head just like peek out <laughs> right. from the side. They're just like, "What's going on?" And like, "What's yeah. happening?" They're just because like yeah, because yeah, you see a guy with like a bunch of suitcases, and you're just <laughs> yeah, like, "Oh, yeah. well, it's like curiosity, yeah, right?" Yeah. And then eventually, when they saw it, like they were shocked, like, "Oh my god!" They're just like, "There's so many books," and you know, like Serge was saying, these they're regular kids. They're curious about stuff. Hyper, they're kind of like energetic. curious about yeah, you, I'm yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, we had a blast. We have great memories attached, especially to our first project in Kapalashwar Puram. And uh, obviously we said, you know, these kids are like, it's wonder. Like you see it in their eyes, you know, like little kids, sure, like yeah. they the see anything. The eyes literally and... brighten up like wide eyes, yeah, yeah. like excited. It's like reminded me of me. When I was a kid, and we used to get like those like slash yeah, or like, like yes. bionicles or something. something. Yeah. yeah, and I was like, I used to see those books like, oh my god, this is like uh -huh. reminded me of me. Yeah, yeah. So those kids, I mean, they were obviously very excited the first time. We had set up a reading room, so we actually paid to have you know tables and chairs set up. In now, the is this room. for the whole village or for a particular school for an okay, orphanage? It's part of an orphanage, but it's the entire village can use it, so they okay, can great. all can come in because you know in India it's like a culture, like very yes. open culture, like. We mm -hmm. keep the doors unlocked. You come yes. in. You live in each other's neighborhood. Yeah. So it was that was for the entire village. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So now you go back a year later, mm. yeah. and yeah. what's the difference? We bring technology. <laughs> Mostly that's yeah. the that's the major uh, selling point. So we actually um, we decided we were slightly changing our vision. Originally, our vision was to just provide uh, books, libraries, right? But then eventually we realized, wait, we sh if we want to improve education, want to improve literacy, it has to be like a wholesome thing. So like. For example, like if things, any, so we decided anything that helps promote literacy is valid. So we we decided to donate technology and like school supplies. So like for technology, what I did personally was I was able to download um, uh, just some basic script, an HTML script, and download uh, PDFs of uh, books of over like two hundred. I actually don't remember how many it was, but it was a lot uh, off like um just free eBooks like Project Gutenberg and stuff. And now I was able to get a lot of just like American classics and like picture books and stuff. I was also able to get like um, 
uh, books that were from their language, Telugu. Oh. Which was really like, because before, obviously, like, even though in India they teach in an English medium. Yes. And they obviously speak English, like, I would say very proficiently. Obviously, the one thing we lacked already in our first uh, trip was that we didn't have any of their own books, of their yes. own language. Yes. So we made sure to correct that the second time around. Wow. And then we That's also That's pretty downloaded. conscious. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And then yeah. also, uh, we also had a kid, so like, I downloaded some like educational games for <laughs> right. them. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. tux typing, just like a bunch of this like fun yeah. like math mm -hmm. games, like typing games. Uh, English games, so, oh my god. Yeah, the the highlight of that, you know, the second trip that we went in is that we actually held a workshop in the children's home, you know, kind of community center. Um, we had all the kids come over, um, we had, you know, village elders, just you know, general, like it was open to the community, and Suj and I held a workshop, and we just kind of had these two laptops set, set up side by side, <laughs> yeah. and we'd have, we had the kids up first, I remember this so clearly. The kids would, they, they're so, like, so amazed, so curious. They're like bunching around it's us and kind of like, oh, like, what's like, happening? Like yeah, so yeah, yeah. So we held that workshop, and obviously the goal is to teach people how to use it so that they can make the mm -hmm. most use out of it. And um, one, you know, obviously one thing that we wanted to avoid the most is that we didn't want to just build a library and have it vegetate, you know, collect dust, and you know, nobody's using them, which I find like if you go in without a vision if you go in without a goal then it's not going to work if the kids aren't interested then it's never gonna your it's dream really is not great. gonna it's not yes. gonna come to fruition so um our you know vision for the future and just something that we keep in mind in general when we do our nonprofit work is that we try to think how can we get these kids to make the most out of this library what can we do to motivate them to read more you know um, we're called the literacy movement for more. So, you know, the ultimate Gotta goal put the is. For more there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Somewhere. yeah the, mm -hmm. the goal is pushing for literacy. So, um, along the way, we've also kind of developed our own, uh, you know, literacy programs, literacy challenges, um, especially working with the schools here in the U.S. Um, we've kind of pushed for um, little reading challenges. We have. Uh, you know, prize week where we'll, you know, yeah, offer incentives prizes. Incentives so that children actually yeah. read their books yes. and actually enjoy yeah, it. Yeah. And like we also had like um, the incentive programs were the biggest thing. Uh, we also had reading logs and such mm -hmm. that was attached to those things. So like yeah. we could make sure that the children like they're not just reading books. They can understand what they're reading. Mm -hmm. Just think mm -hmm. a little more critically. It's like the next level kind of reading yeah. stuff. Wow. Yeah. So our... Our, you know, development is always our number one goal. We're always focusing, you know, on the kid. We don't want to just give them books and then have them do nothing yeah. with it. Right. So, yes. um, yeah, we've, you know, focused on kind of, you know, education. Challenging as a whole. them, motivating yeah. them, enrolling them in the idea. Yeah, yeah. 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 Really great. So you actually also started a library somewhere in the Bahamas, yes? Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. So t how did that come about? Yeah. So um, as if library in India is not enough at the age of 13. Oh, yeah, well, uh, for the Bahamas, we as a family have, you know, been fortunate enough to vacation in the Bahamas for a couple of times, but um, my family and I, one of the key things that we do, especially when we vacation and stuff is, uh, we don't go just for, you know, a resort or something. We always, uh, you know, intermingle with the locals. We love going out more, like, in the inner rural areas and kind of getting to know the people. That's our favorite part. We're, we're people people. Yeah, we're <laughs> so yeah, we love talking to people. So um, while we were in the Bahamas, we stayed um, in a place, not a resort or anything. We really tried to stay with the locals, get to know them. And uh, as we were talking to them, we kind of just found that the Bahamas isn't as pristine and as lovely as, you know, the resorts make them seem. And there's real people. The resorts living. are, but the yeah. rest Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The rest there's real the people interest. living there. So um, we decided to kind of go um, yeah, a couple miles out from the capital um, into more of the underdeveloped areas. And, you know, there are tons of children's homes there that do get aid from the government. But obviously, that's not nearly enough. So... Uh, we ended up getting in contact with a children's home that, you know, we're just driving by. And we were when we're talking about a children's home, are we, is it like an orphanage? Uh, it's not exactly. So a children's home is just a home for children who um, their parents, while they are still alive, per se, they don't have the resources to, like, uh, mm -hmm. sustain them pretty much. To, like, right. They don't have enough money to uh, feed them. 
to educate them. So they live at these places. Yeah. But the parents have access to them. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, we went to the children's home. We, you know, just started talking to them, saw what the situation was. And uh, the lady in charge, she, you know, made it clear that these kids didn't really have a lot of educational resources to begin with. I mean, they weren't getting enough aid from the government. So we could also very I, much see it too yeah. when we visited. Like originally, when we went there, it was like a very dilapidated building. It was like mm -hmm. caked. I don't know what's the word to describe mm -hmm. it. Like um, the walls were kind of, I guess, rugged. Mm -hmm. I guess that's a good word to describe it. Rugged. Raw. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like also like cement buildings too. Right. So you could actually kind of see like caving. I want to say caving, but like it's falling off the yes. cement a little bit in certain parts. Mm -hmm. So that was really like sad. And then like I mean. Well, I wouldn't actually say it's sad because, like, the children were, like, very energetic and yeah. happy. Yeah, yeah, the kids. Like, I, yeah. Well, kids, yeah. yeah kids and kids. kids will be kids. Yes, yeah. and kids will, uh, that that inner spark of joy is still alive. Yeah. yeah. But they need something else. Yeah. And they of need course. people like you showing up. So mm -hmm. what did you do there? Well, we, obviously, that was one year we went. Um, and then the next summer while we were visiting, Serge and I decided, well, build a library there so yeah <laughs> oh let's just yeah. build another yeah, library yeah we'll yeah. build a library so we did the same thing with our luggage we managed to ship it all over um through our fundraising you know we used the funds yeah. to uh buy containers at least for the mm -hmm. books because um they had shelving available there so we thought we would supplement that with yeah. some containers in case there wasn't enough space wow yeah. you know that it, it you again taking it so for granted like mm -hmm. they yeah. had shelves yeah <laughs> you know we think Shelves. I mean, shelves are a given, yeah. but yeah. you actually yeah. are looking at a place that mm -hmm. might not. Yeah. 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 And the so. thing with our Bahamas trip was also, um, we also made sure to get school supplies this time around because everything is more expensive in the Bahamas. So while we So might, school supplies like pencils. Yeah, pencils, yeah. loose leaf. Loose leaf was a big one there because a piece of paper. <laughs> it's like we can buy staples for Pong very easily, but they don't have like staples. They have to buy like wow. buy the page. Mm -hmm. It's very expensive wow. there. So yeah, so yeah. we had to so we focused on uh, pens, pencils, loose leaf, um, notebooks too, which was something like actually because the quality of our notebooks are actually better there. You don't even realize it too. They don't have like the same like I think like notebooks. It's like um, what's the brand? It's oh, like cheap paper. Cheap paper. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like not, not durable. Cheap paper that is still expensive. For yeah. yeah, yeah. And so we decided to get like you know better quality stuff from mm -hmm. here, and then we could buy everything in bulk, and it was it was nice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. wow. Yeah, we also focused on you know especially with the school supplies. We managed. There were about 30, 31 kids at the children's home, and we took it upon ourselves just to make you know kind of just packages for each of these kids so we bought a backpack for each of the kids oh my god we filled it with the school supplies we had you know just you do you know, know how many people case. you've made happy yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and whose future yeah. you've impacted yeah tremendously. that's yeah I will say that's the, the thing about the future is actually the craziest thing so back going back to our original um thing right so i remember so we actually said it's been uh five i think five years since our first uh, four years four, four years since our first trip and we've actually seen people go to college from mm -hmm. our first original thing. Wow. We went to our most recent trip, and then we saw, like, three girls. Like, they're still at the orphanage, but they're going to college now. And I remember just seeing them, and it's like, oh, my God, they're... I just... I just cause, you, you know, remember seeing them four years ago. Yeah, yeah, no, they're just acting older. And we're just like... I'm like, oh, my God, like, we... we, yeah. we you, them. Yes, yeah. you did. And so, you know, we have about three minutes left, but... Mm -hmm. Uh, so I want to just, how many libraries have you started? Six. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Some of them in this country. Yeah. Yes. yes. And uh, you're 17 years old. Mm -hmm. Let's yeah. not forget that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. And in these four years, you've impacted lives in ways that you will probably never even recognize. So one and a half minutes each. each. What's the vision? Right. So um, our original vision, obviously, is to promote literacy through the construction of libraries and, uh, you know, we provision of very crucial educational elements such as technology and school supplies. So our vision for the future is, our short-term vision at least, is to build 100 libraries um, globally. Um, but obviously, in the long run, we want to be part of the worldwide solution. Um, we want to become big enough to go for the goal of just eradicating literacy worldwide. Um, you kept on bringing this up, this that 
we take things for granted, especially where we grow up, shelves, books, libraries. It's all a given for us. But um, my brother and I have, you know, taken it on as a moral responsibility that, you know, these kids, they, I mean, these people around the world, especially if they can't have, the thing, have these things for granted, then, you know, why do we deserve to have it? Humans are all equal. We should all have the same things, I think. So our vision is to eradicate illiteracy around the world. We want to, you know, help impact people around the world. And hopefully we'll get big enough to do that. We're going off to college yeah. this year. So, you know, through educational, we'll learn more things and grow. Thank you. One minute. One minute. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, no, just like you said, just as my sister said, we just want to make everyone equal. We want to we want to put a, a smile on these kids because, mm -hmm. like, to, uh, to provide for yourself, to read books, to enjoy opportunities. L literacy is so important, and we just want everybody to have the opportunity, that basic, to be a basic human thing. And we just want everybody to be able to just read a book, maybe to enjoy it, maybe to study for the future, maybe, you know, just read a book. And, yes, and yes. And it's something beautiful, amazing, and we hope that everybody can eventually. Support us. Yeah. Yes, so I am in awe of you. Thank you. Uh, I want to thank you for being the human beings that you are. <laughs> thank you. And, uh, and it's not like, you know, you, you aren't ordinary kids who love <laughs> ordinary things. Yeah. It's just that you saw a need and you yeah. also grew up in a context where you were taught that it's important to make a difference. Right. That's a magic, you know, kind of combination. And uh, just please keep on keeping on. Thank and you. I invite people to check out the website. It's going to be, uh, you know, uh, it's on the show. And get involved and get engaged, yeah. donate, do whatever you mm -hmm. can. But yeah. thank you so much. Thank well, you. It's thank a you pleasure. For this opportunity. My name is Natasha Sherman. Thank you for joining us.